to have Hong Kong team player Philip Chen to join us. Welcome, Philip. Hello, 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 hello. Nice to meet you. Okay, so today we will be talking about different topics. First, we would like to talk about the different difficulties for prayers to study and pray at the same time. We know that when you are praying in some shape of, you were yeah. like studying and praying at the same time. What difficulties did you encounter at that period of time? Uh, difficulties would be uh, trying to divide uh, time for football and school. Uh, of course, you know, if you, whoever went, people who went to unis and uh, colleges would know that you're always on a tight schedule, you know, for assignments and everything. But uh, at the same time, I had I, I was playing for most of the time I was playing for South China, so it was a big club, and uh, I couldn't skip any training. So uh, I had to put extra time after training to cope with schoolwork, and uh, it didn't turn out to be too good. It really didn't turn out to be too good. So I uh, what was meant to be three years, I did it in five years, and. Um, and at the end, I finished, but it was yeah, it was very hard because I had to spend at least three or four hours a day for training, and then another three or four hours a day at school. Uh, not to mention that uh, there was always traveling where we had to go to away games for AFC, and every time we left, it would be for four or five t- five days, and you know, it's not easy when you are leaving school for like four or five days. It's not it's not um, yeah, it's not easy to manage, but at the end, I made it. Um, so for whoever's studying and playing football, good luck to you. Remember to manage your time properly. And um, when you have, whenever you face difficulty, whenever you want to give up, just remember that at the end of the day, you can play football and finally get a degree at the, when you, when you yeah, uh, before you complete your career, you can always have a degree to back up uh, whatever you want to do. So, yeah. So when you were studying and praying at the same time, you will miss classes. So was it difficult to communicate with the professors about the classes you missed, the homework you need to hand in afterwards? It, it was difficult, but uh, it is also not their responsibility to, to help you. Uh, it's your own responsibility. You need to find ways. You know, For me, I had to talk to my... Uh, classmates and you know ask them for favors you know help me hand in homework or help me tell me when the deadlines are because I I keep on forgetting things uh, so yeah it was not easy it was a very long period of time where I had to uh, endure alone and um, yeah you just have to you just have to do it year by year you know you keep on reminding yourself after this year will be better after this year will be better and uh, try to enjoy it. It was not very enjoyable for me. I don't, I don't like studying that much. But at the end, I got my degree, and I was very, very, very happy. And I and I and I was playing football at the same time. So yeah, I was very happy. Would you suggest that the universities or the secondary school should have more support to athletes or football players like you that are representing Hong Kong? Of course, you know I didn't get enough support. I didn't get any support at all, actually. Uh, the only support I got, if you can call it a support, was they, they let me finish my degree two years later than I should. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, universities or schools or colleges anywhere around should show more backup and um, support to their athletes. So I wouldn't even only say athletes, you know. Um, it could be a uh, anyone. It could be a a, a a musician or whatever. You know, where they're trying to explore their own life and try to show the best of themselves. And you know, it doesn't have to be with sport. It can be with uh, art. It could be with anything. But uh, yeah, you should. We should all know, or the, or the school at least should know that they can't dedicate too much time on school. But they want to be. They they still want to have their degree. They still want to complete their course. So they should be given a bit of exemption and they should be given a little bit of support uh, to, to help them to help them to help their lives, you know, to make it easier for them. Uh, I didn't get as much as I thought I should, but you know, in the coming days, people who are studying and people who are playing football at the same time should be given more support. Yeah, I agree. What kind of support you think the government or the 
educational system can give to the athletes? Uh, I would say they should be given that there should be an extra group of people to take care of them. Uh, you know, like a, a extra tutor or like a not a baby not a babysitter, but like a, someone to take care of them, remind them uh, when the deadlines are. You know, there there should be someone like that, not just you know student and professor. There should be someone in the middle. And um, apart from that, I would say uh, they should be given not so much duties. You know, they, they, if if uh, they should be given uh, a discounted credit or uh, what do you how do you say it? like they should be given more time or they should be given less work. Either one of that, and uh, either you give them that or in the beginning and you tell them that or uh, uh, you tell them no you have to do the same amount of work you should quit your career you should quit your football career you should quit your musical career or whatever but you should be clear from the start that when you accept a, a person as an athlete or as a, a musician yeah you should be they should be given they should be given uh, uh, some sort of help and, and uh, discount I would say do you think the lack of support for at least for musicians is because the culture of our society in Hong Kong? Yes, definitely, definitely, one hundred percent. People who study abroad, they 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 find it a lot easier to cope with uh, sports and life out life life outside school and um, careers uh, while studying. They they find it much more easier, for sure. I, I would say, yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, in Hong Kong, they, don't, they, they it's not so diverse. It's not. I would say that they don't respect. Uh, um, they don't. They, they don't respect and care too much about life outside school, or at least when I, when I was studying. Yeah. Okay, so when you are studying in high school, how many hours do you put in football a week? Uh, three hours a day. Okay. Do you think it was enough or not? It it can be more. It can be more, but uh, that was enough. Yeah, it could have been more, but you know, I I only have three hours a day for football every day. Okay, so after this topic, let's move on to the next topic. That is the difficulties, but for the Hong Kong next Hong Kong representative team in the Asian Cup qualifications. Okay. For this Asian Cup qualifications, we understand there were a lot of difficulties. Mm-hmm. For example, because we have the season cancelled in Hong Kong, how does that affect the team? Because at that time, I think only Kichi, Eastern, and Lee Man was playing in Asian games, and other players were not even playing any games before the real qualification match. How does that affect the mentality of the game, of the team, or everything on in the team? For me, I played for Kichi, and uh, we were training in Thailand for two months before the, the, the uh, before going to in before going to India for the qualifications. So for me, it was okay. I was in a good condition, and uh, but for the people who weren't playing in Asian games, like you said. Uh, I think they it was harder for them to 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 catch up with the pace and the fitness and everything, but they did a pretty good job at the end. They they spent a lot of time, extra work, uh, before going to the qualification. They had they were they they just seemed fine, you know. They just seemed like the players who were playing for Kichi, Lee Man, and East. Yeah, so it was fine. Uh, the the staff did a good job uh, taking care of them and making sure they were. They were they were they were good fitness wise, and yeah, they, they they didn't seem like they were different from us or players who were who were playing continuously. Do you do you think staying in India was the biggest obstacle for the whole qualification match? Yeah, uh, one one of the biggest difficulties, similarly, because um, uh, it was. Mm, the food was not very good. Uh, the level of hygiene was not very good. And, uh, the heat was a problem. 
uh, yeah, these main reasons, I think. Uh, it could have been better if it was organized somewhere else, like uh, I would say Korea or Japan, but but we have to get used to it, you know? It could be India today, it could be uh, Sri Lanka tomorrow, so, you know, it's not an, not an excuse. Will you ever go back to travel to India because you, the goalkeeper Yapong Fai said he would never travel to India if not necessary. If not necessary, I wouldn't go to India, no. Okay. Are there any more specific difficulties in India except the points you mentioned? Yeah, a lot of people are sick. A lot of people got sick uh, uh, and we, uh, we had some people had to miss games because they were sick, you know. I don't know if it was COVID or whatever, but yeah, you know, there, there weren't any measurements for hygiene and there weren't any uh, protocols. So it was not very easy. It's not easy. Um, so before going to India, you guys stay in Thailand and then play a friendly game against Malaysia. Do you think the training came in Thailand and the friendly game against Malaysia was a good foundation for your journey in the AFC qualification? A very good foundation. We needed that to know where we were at uh, and and how how we could improve, you know. We knew our level when we played against Malaysia and we know we were not good enough. So we went to, before we went to India, we improved a little bit more and uh, uh, mentally we were a little bit more prepared when we got to India. So thanks to the game in Malaysia and the, and a few other games in Thailand, we could improve and we could have, uh, we could made, we made more chemistry between players and uh, and we knew our shape a lot better because we, we, you know, like you said, a lot of players were not playing, uh, were not playing in official games for like half a year. So that really helped us a lot. Yeah, that, that was a good foundation. Before the game against Afghanistan, how was the team inside the dressing room? Was the team excited to begin a new journey? Were the team nervous about the first game? No, no, no. Uh, it was it was good. You know, we we knew it was a it was we knew we were in a group good group to qualify a, a potential uh, chance where we can qualify. So we went in with a very good mentality and uh, and we did what we we went there to do. Yeah good result for the first game and then that was yeah, that, that gave us a lot, a lot of confidence was you were you surprised to see Jason a Hong Kong team friend to support inside the stadium at the first game yeah a little bit because I didn't think anyone from Hong Kong would go to India okay, okay after in the first game you guys Hong Kong scored two goals really quick in the first half. How was the away in half time? Sorry, I start again in this sentence. So against Afghanistan, Hong Kong team scored two goals in the first half. How was the coach dealing with it in the dressing room at half time? Did they expect it or did he say anything to caution that you guys need to be more focused? Uh, I don't I don't remember actually because I came on at halftime already. I, I wasn't in the changing room. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. I did, I didn't remember. I thought you played the whole game. Yeah. So, in this qualification match, Hong Kong team is playing really aggressively. Is something actually quite new for Hong Kong fans because usually when there was Kim and the former coach Mike was playing much more defensively. As a player, do you feel more excited to play in a team that is more aggressive and more offensive? Yeah, I, I, I like the new style. I, I, I'm trying my best to to uh, adapt to it because it's, not, it's something new. But yeah, I feel excited. I feel I feel like it can bring uh, it can bring Hong Kong and the team and the fans, a lot of surprises and a very good image. And yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, it's a new, it's a new attempt, different from any other one. So uh, yeah, we should, we should try a new way and see if it can bring us far. For example, the new style again, 
in East Asian Cup, the team is still playing very offensive, and against Japan and Korea, it the scoreline wasn't so good, and against China, it lost zero one. What do you think in the team should improve or deal with it better while playing this much more offensive style comparing to the defensive style before? Uh, we need a better fitness first of all because we're pressing high uh, for ninety minutes, you know, or at least try to press high for ninety minutes. So we need a very good fitness and a very good discipline, uh, and we need a very good finish, a very determined finish. Uh, when we win the ball, we try to organize an attack and uh, try to finish the action with a, a, a shoot. And to do that, we need very good finish, yeah, and do determination. Think, do you think? In Hong Kong, we don't have enough local striker that will actually affect this kind of playing style. Yeah, we we need more local forwards and strikers who have a who are very confident with shooting, who are who have a good eye on goal, and who have a mentality where they want to to score goals. Uh, who can who can also hold the ball and have good strength. Uh, right now, we don't have too many choices, but hopefully, in the coming years, we can have. A, we could have more options. What do you feel like to play under Coach Anderson? Yeah, he's a very good person. You know, he doesn't seem like a very uh, gentle person when I first met him, or maybe to the fans. You know, uh, but he's a very nice person, easy to talk with, and uh, he will make adjustments according to what players he has. And uh, he has really good communication. Um, He's trying to bring a new style to Hong Kong football, and we should try to respect it and try to learn from that. Yeah. Are the match preparations and the trainings different from other coaches you experience in Hong Kong? It's a little bit different, a little bit different, but uh, we are used to being different. Yeah. Okay. So after the Mongolia game. Before the India game, you guys qualified for the A AFC Cup final. No, no AF. Sorry. So before the India game, after the Comdovia game, between the two games, you guys confirmed to be one of the finalists in the Asian Cup. How was that? How does that feel when you receive the news in the hotel? Uh, of course, it felt great because, uh, from what I remember, it's been fifty or more years before uh, since the last qualification, and um, yeah, it felt really good. You know, it felt like we 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 got what we got, and our our efforts have paid off. You know, so there was something to celebrate, but I think we celebrated too much. You know, we were too happy, and we didn't play very well against India. Although it didn't matter, but I think we could have played better against India, and it would be the perfect finish if we, at least you know, didn't get, uh, at least we got a draw or something, you know. But that didn't happen, and uh, yeah, it was not the perfect finish, but it was good. We saw at the end, because uh, we qualified um, without even having to play play the third game. So yeah. When playing against India, I. Uh, during the match, I can see that the stadium was almost full of Indian fans. How was that atmosphere? How was the feeling playing under that atmosphere? It's good. It was very good. You know, they were they were. I didn't know. In, I didn't know football in India was so popular, and I hope uh, one day Hong Kong could be like that. You know, feel the fans like 30, 40 thousand people in the stadium. Hopefully, one day it could happen like that too. Okay, do you think the no attendance in Hong Kong football is because Hong Kong always changing the clubs? For example, this season, maybe we have resource capital, we have Hong Kong under 23 and they might disappear in the future. Do you think it's because the inconsistency of the clubs? One of the main reasons, yeah, but also because of people's culture and, uh, and how much they love football and the quality of football you know those two are the additional reasons because um, uh, i don't feel like hong kong people love football especially people 
from other countries. Yeah, and that needs to change first. Okay. Do you think it is possible to change? Because it's like a lot of parents will be like teaching their kids that you need to be a lawyer, you need to be a doctor, and some other people think playing football is not going to earn money. So, do you think it, there's any chance to change this culture? Not much, from what I see, not much, because uh, in Hong Kong it's more realistic, you know. Uh, so playing football is not really the first choice for a lot of families, and uh, I respect that, and I know it, and I don't think it will change, and unless Hong Kong football does, you know, when Hong Kong football changes, uh, this uh, mentality where they let the kids play football professionally, I think it will change accordingly. Okay, so we entered the last part. Is let's talk a little bit about South China. You, we all know that South China relegates to the League One a few years back. Do you think that was a turning point to Hong Kong football? Do you think that actually it made Hong Kong football worse with South China disappearing from the Premier League? I wouldn't say worse, but I would say it was a big effect. It had a big impact on Hong Kong football because it's like, like Real Madrid uh, quitting from La Liga or Man United leaving Premier League, you know, it's a traditional club where there are a lot of memories and a lot of respect. So when that left, for a lot of other teams, there was less competition. And when there's less competition, the league is not as um, exciting. Uh, even though after they left, uh, uh, I mean, Hong Kong football didn't drop a lot because Still, I would want them to stay because they are a very traditional, strong team in Hong Kong and with a lot of history. So, uh, yeah, it was sad to see them leave and um, hopefully one day they can come back soon. Do you feel if South China come back to Hong Kong football, the competition will be a bit stronger than the league we have now, especially this year we are having the score, some ridiculous score line, like 7 new, 10 new. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, South China coming back, or maybe other traditional teams coming back, or maybe if the league has more teams, maybe 12 or 14 teams, the, the competition will be much better. Uh, the, the, the game plays will be uh, much better, and uh, I think there'll be more investments. And yeah, I think not only South China, you know, like a, a lot of other teams when they come back, or um, new teams that join will make the competition a lot better. Yes. Okay, now, so we have talked a lot about development of Hong Kong footballs. Let's talk something about yourself. As we know, in the Hong Kong Football Association official Facebook, there was one comment said your performance was disastrous. Did that affect you at all? Or did you feel unhappy after seeing that? No, I felt it was funny. Yeah. Not unhappy, okay. but funny. Yeah, but I didn't really care about it after all, you know. Uh, just use your actions and show them, you know, tell them to shut up or uh, prove it to them with, with your actions. You know? I'm not gonna I'm not going to attack any comments about me, you know, if I'm you know, if I had to attack comments about me, I'll be very busy every day, but you can attack it. The best way to attack it is to show it to them with your actions. How about when some people are criticizing from the stands in same. the stadium? You will do it the same. Same, same, same. You close your ears and you focus on the game and just play the football you are meant to play. Okay. So thank you very much for having this interview with us. We are really happy to have you sharing all the your experience and your opinion about Hong Kong football. Okay. And thank you for watching. Okay. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.